doing? I'm videotaping this. Oh, <laughs> and this is what we're making. So we're making a New Zealand style Sauvignon Blanc. And what we have in here, I'm actually gotta put this down so I can open this up, show what's inside. All right, so let's open this up. This is what you get inside one of these kits. You get a little package of containers. A little package with a bunch of stuff in it. Put that off to the side for now. This is it right here. So we get. This is the juice. What is it? Four gallons. We don't have to take it out now. But it's four gallons of grape juice, concentrated grape juice. Well, leave that. Leave that for now. And then, in addition to that, show you what else you get in one of these packages. Get rid of that. Okay. So some of these kits don't give you these, but this one gives you labels for the bottles when they're done. So it gives you about 30, 30 labels. And it gives you oak chips. And this actually gets poured right into the wine as part of the fermentation, part of the primary fermenter. And the other thing you get are the instructions. And then in that other packet, you get a couple of packets of fentanyl, potassium sorbate and sulfite, the yeast, and then you have the Kiesel, Sol, the Chitazane, Kitazane, Chitazane, Kitazane, something. And that's it. So this is what we use for sanitizing. It's a product called Star San. And for our little two gallon bucket that we use to keep our solution, we go to about half, a little bit less than half. So we use that, mix it in with our two gallon solution of just warm water. And then we use that to sanitize the primary fermenter. We sanitize everything. Cover, the wine thief, the hygrometer, the, the bung, the airlocks, everything. So now once we sanitize, we give it a couple of minutes to air dry. Don't be afraid of the suds. Don't fear the suds. Oh, but I always do. <laughs> okay, so now the first step is adding the bentonite into the wine. You want to do that kind of slowly, so you're adding it in and you're kind of stirring it as you go. And the bentonite is actually used to help with the clearing of the wine. Just want to keep adding it in, stirring it in slowly. There you go. And we actually use no. about a liter of water. Four liters, one gallon. I'm sorry, yeah, four liters of water, one gallon of water on this step. And you want to just keep mixing it until it's about dissolved, completely dissolved. And you add warm water. Yeah, it's got to be warm water to help with dissolving. All right, then now the next step. Pop that off.
sink. Put some warm water. So what we're doing is filling to the six gallon mark, which is right here, with water, warm water. Ah! And there you have it, six gallons of grape juice. <laughs> just so let it cover the entire lid there. Now that we've got everything mixed, you want to mix it all together. It smells really good. <laughs> mm, smell of vision worked. What I found the most impressive, I guess, when I made my when we made our first white wine was how cloudy the juice was in the beginning. And in the end, after you add all the clarifying things to it, it comes out so clear and you can actually see the I don't know whatever it is that makes it cloudy actually get pulled to the bottom and it becomes such a clear wine. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but this is our Amarone. Amarone wine. You can see what she's talking about. The very bottom. So you can kind of see all the sediment getting pulled out from underneath. So this has been in here for about a month now. That. And you can see that. And I'm going to leave it in there. I'm not going to take it out. But you can kind of see how all of the sediment gets kind of pulled out to the bottom. And then the nice thing is, let me see if I can find a, this is where we keep our stash. It's growing a little bit, but if I can find a clear bottle of the Pinot Grigio. Oh, this would be a good one. Oh, you can kind of see it right from here. Hold it right up to the light. And it comes out pretty clear. It does a really good job of pulling all the sediment out. There's a nice white white bottle, clear bottle. There you go. Does a really good job. It looks completely empty. But we digress. Is adding the oak chips. And you add it directly into the wine itself. That's what gives it, obviously, its nice oaky taste to it. You want to put it in there while it's fermenting so that it ferments in as well. And in case you're hearing the screaming in the background, that's someone losing at Smash Bros. But that's it. All right, switching sides here, but next step you want to do is you want to go ahead and grab a sample. And you want to pop in the wine the, the hygrometer at the very top. And what you want to do is you want to take a reading. And yeah, I got it. So we're at, so you're starting at 0.99 at the very top. And you see how it goes from 0.99 to 1.0. And what I like to do is I like to make sure that it's not resting along the sides so that the whole hygrometer is floating sort of in midair in, in the water column or in the wine column itself. And that takes a little playing around with. And then basically what you're doing is you're looking for where the, where the water touches. So we're at 1.0. 
Nine four point zero nine one point zero nine four. Right. And then what you do is you just touch the tip in there so that it drains it all out. Waste not, right? And then you just record that in the instruction sheet. And then what you do is during each stage you're recording the specific gravity and where it's supposed to reach and then with the specific gravity you can calculate the alcohol by volume. Now by testing the hygrometer, uh, testing the specific gravities, you can look, there's a little cheat sheet right on the barrel, right on the bucket itself, but you take the specific gravity post fermentation and you cross check it with the pre-fermentation and you take the two numbers and where they cross, that gives you your alcohol volume. Okay, so we've got the wine sealed up, sprinkled the yeast in, and we put the airlock on it. And now the airlock is just basically the sanitized sanitization solution, which is why there's all kinds of bubbles in it. Then what ends up happening is as the fermentation is going on, the air pushes up, or the carbon dioxide actually pushes up, lifts the cap up, the cap hits the stopper, and then the air actually is forced down through the water and then it bubbles on the outside. And that keeps the outside air from coming inside. And that's it. That's the first step. So in about a week's time, we're going to be transferring from here to another carboy, like this guy. And then that's what we're going to be letting do, doing its secondary fermentation. So, so we'll see you then. So, actually, so I started video editing, I came back and I looked, and you can actually see what I'm talking about. It started fermenting already. So you can see the carbon dioxide is being produced, and it's being jettisoned out, and the cap is lifted, and pretty soon you might actually be able to see some bubbles going. And that's exactly what you want to see. So it'll be fermenting in the primary fermenter for about a week, six days, seven days. Um, yeah, and then we'll check back then. So, oh, just bubbled again. Exciting times. All right, we'll check back in about a week. Thanks for watching.